Okay, so today we're going to do a little more on an enrichment that you're not going to do, but I want to show you something about it because um, it's it's a really good thing to review. And we're going to do a little bit of um, we're going to show you how to do an enrichment for mixobacteria, which you actually will do. We are going to attempt to isolate or show you how to isolate an organism that's called Azotobacter, which is a free-living nitrogen fixer. We're making media called Ashby's medium. Now when you look at the materials here and it says auger, that's just a solidifying agent, right? Mannitol, calcium chloride, potassium, magnesium, mol uh, well, molybdic stuff, iron. What is missing in that formula? What is missing in an organism that needs something? Mannitol is a carbon source. There's micronutrients in there, to, or elements like calcium and potassium, magnesium sulfate. There's iron. There's, uh, you know, molybdenum. Um, what, what is it that we, what is it that we're missing in this thing? Well, if you looked before my thumb was there, and if you listened to what I said, you'd know that Azotobacter is, is a free-living nitrogen fixer. So this is nitrogen-free. Notice nowhere in here is there any nitrogen. So what we're going to do is force the organism to grow, um, or anything that does grow, is going to have to be using nitrogen from the atmosphere, N2 from the atmosphere. So this medium that I'm poured plates for, all we're going to do is, I'm just going to take in like you're going to, you were going to season a flank steak, or for you vegans, an eggplant with a little bit of uh, salt and pepper, and just um, um, pepper it on the surface of the auger, and we're going to wait and we'll see what comes out of this, and we'll hopefully show you that we've got some uh, um, organisms that are growing on nitrogen. Um, and we'll know they're growing on nitrogen because there is no nitrogen in the plate. We didn't supply it. The only way they can grow is if they have, are able to utilize atmospheric nitrogen. We're so careful, in fact, that this auger is not typical normal boring auger that we think of. It's something called noble auger. Doesn't that sound special? That means it's very clean. In other words, the usual auger we use in all of our plates we've used so far is, is probably contaminated with things like nitrogen sources. This stuff that I'm going to use is acid washed. It's wonderful. It is free of nitrogen. So you have to use that in order to make sure. The other thing we're going to do is add something called cyclohexamide to this. 100 micrograms per mil, that will try to kill off or get rid of some of the fungi that might be there. Because some fungi contaminates regardless of what you do. They're pretty hardy little suckers. What we'll do now is talk a little bit about the mixobacteria. Hallelujah. 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 Mixobacteria grow in soil. So there's our soil sample. They grow on protein and by eating other bacteria. So what we're going to do is basically hope that there's mixobacteria in this soil from SU, and we're going to bait them. In other words, we're not going to use sugar in the medium. We're not going to do anything spe specific like that. We're going to sprinkle this onto what's called a water auger plate, which literally is water and auger to solidify it but we're going to impregnate that plate before it solidifies with a little rabbit dung pellet or deer dung pellet. This is going to be a source of bacteria. These have been sterilized, they've been autoclaved. Um, what we're going to do is put them, impregnate them into the water auger and sprinkle soil around them. What will happen is the mix of bacteria are in the soil along with lots of other stuff. But because we're going to put this onto water auger, there's not much nutrients. So things that do come out of this soil will get on the water auger and die off or not grow well because there's nothing for them to eat. But the mixos will be attracted by what's in these dung pellets. 
the bacteria that are in these dung. Because remember, dung is essentially wall-to-wall -wall bacteria. And so they will come out of the soil. We hope they will go to the, uh, to the little dung pellets and literally crawl on top of them. They will eat the nutrients, the bacteria that are in there. And over time, probably about two weeks, they will run out of nutrients and they will go into a developmental life cycle. Mixobacteria form what are called fruiting bodies, which we'll talk about in class. Um, but to go into fruiting body development, you have to starve. So they will go on to these, they will realize there's nothing left after a while, they will start their developmental process, and what we do in this enrichment is look for fruiting bodies on the surface of these dark dung plates, these little pieces of dung, because mixo fruiting bodies are bright orange and bright yellow, and they should be really obvious against the surface of this. Again, we're going to add a little cyclohexamide. And we will um, pour these plates, put these little um, dung pellets in there. Once they solidify, we'll then sprinkle our soil, and that'll be your enrichment for mixobacteria. Okay? So I'm going to get my cyclohexamide, and I will be right back. So we take our water auger with cyclohexamide, your sterile technique, and pour your plate. These can be a little thicker than usual because you're going to need these things for quite a while. Now you take your forceps, put them in some ethanol, flame it just to surface sterilize the uh, forceps. And then you grab a few of these little dung pellets and you just pop them into the water auger. And they do tend to sort of wander. Um, I'd put maybe four in there. Four is sufficient. Get that little rascal over here. And what you do is notice they're above the surface, okay? They're not completely sunk. And the idea is that we hope that they will um, attract our bacteria. So now we let those just solidify. It might take a little while. Um, and then we'll just sprinkle those with dirt. And then we'll incubate them at 30 degrees, and then we'll wait and see what happens. Okay, everybody, so... These are solidified. I've labeled them as Mixo Water Auger, my initials and the date. And you can see that their little dung pellets are in there. And I've got my soil. So literally all you need to do at this point, super easy, is literally take your soil sample, your fingers are fine, and sprinkle the soil around the dung plates, the, or the little dung. Don't put the soil on top of the dung, okay? Just put it nearby. You don't need much, okay? You don't need much. Put a couple trees in there, that's okay, okay? So again, literally take your soil, sprinkle it around, but not on top of. Oops, put that one on top of, you big doorknob. Now, we'll just let these sit at, incubate them at 30, 30 degrees, 31 degrees. These are actually, um, believe it or not, um, you can turn them over and you can see that the dirt doesn't fall off, or very few of them falls off. So you can still incubate them upside down. And I'm going to put them in a baggie, and I'm going to let them incubate, either at room temperature in my office or at 30 degrees, I'm not sure which. I'm going to let them go and check them every probably week. And this is just the simple procedure you'll be doing. You'll be doing this and you'll be doing a, a, a pseudomonas enrichment that's very simple. Um, and what you'll do, instead of coming back and looking at these later, um, I'm gonna look at them later and let you know, like I said, what you got in the end, okay? That'll be sort of a nice present at the very last lab period if we actually get any. So that is the simple and very basic enrichment for mixobacteria.
Let's see how these Ashby's plates are doing. They're still a little wet. Yeah, they still need a little bit more time. So let them go a little bit. But literally all I'm going to do is do exactly the same thing I did with the Mixos, which is take the dirt, sprinkle it on top, and let them incubate. And again, the only thing that should grow on these plates are things that can use atmospheric nitrogen. Because we have no nitrogen in those plates. Okay, so I'll let you know what happens. Literally, 